in verse 54. <clears throat> He who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. <clears throat> okay, so why will you be resurrected? Because you've been good? That's right, because you haven't been good. <laughs> uh, because you've served God in ministry? No, because you haven't. Never mind. <laughs> Uh, because you've been faithful, because you've never doubted. All right. <clears throat> well, verse 39 says, And this is the Father's will, who hath sent me, that of all that he hath given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up uh, again at the last day. And then this verse says, in verse 54, he who eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. In other words, the resurrection he is talking about is a resurrection to life. Think about it. It is not a resurrection to life as we call it, eternal life, which is not what Jesus is talking about here when he says eternal life. It's not a resurrection to living forever in heaven. It is a resurrection unto his broken bread life, dead bread, that's what we called it. And that comes as a result of not taking it in in a class, not taking it in in church, but taking it in, you know, I think probably the real process doesn't happen in church or class or whatever. I think the real process, at least the real process for me happened as I meditated later and would think about these things and would just... And I still am. I mean, I still do that. I still, uh, I'm very slow at moving ahead of the Holy Spirit. I want to get everything he says because I know that he's building and that, you know, usually our goal is real fast, go through everything, you know, and that's like, you know, that's like eating real fast and then getting diarrhea and then it's all gone. <clears throat> Can we call this class... Uh, no, never mind. <laughs> Absolutely. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Um, so there is, um, in verse 54, there is this thing that he's trying to communicate, and it's a, re it's a resurrection, <clears throat> uh, not of the body, and not of in the sense of being raised up and made to sit together in heavenly places or any of the, those areas, this is more akin to what Jesus meant when he said, I am the resurrection and the life. Okay. And that's what, he, that's what he keeps talking about here. And if you, I don't have time to go back to it all, but I'm telling you, he keeps talking about life and he keeps talking about, yes. <clears throat> if, if this is what Paul's talking about in Philippians, All right. when he says that I may know him in the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings, being made conformable unto his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Mm. <clears throat> I don't know, I'm just wondering, is that in the same flow? Well, I don't, I certainly don't think that that resurrection there is talking about the, you know, resurrection of the body or, you know, uh, you know, what we call, the res what most Christians are familiar with, the term of resurrection. <clears throat> I think it is that, you know, I, this is my opinion. I think that by taking that all in and becoming one with him in that stuff, then his resurrection life, and this is where most people, I think, miss it, and what do I know? 
but the resurrection life of Jesus is still lamb, slaughtered lamb on a throne. That's what, that's what his resurrection is. So, so we're, we're all looking for the resurrection to get out of being lamb-like. <laughs> Can't wait for the resurrection. <laughs> Can't wait. Can't wait to, to shove out Jesus. Yeah, Nisi. It's like in the book of Revelation when, when John saw Jesus and he fell at his feet as dead. <clears throat> okay. Well, that was the like what Nisi was talking about in the tabernacle and all of the ministers falling down as dead. And so John falls at his feet as dead. And uh, by the way, same guy who wrote John 6. <clears throat> and Jesus said, reaches down and takes him and, and says, arise, and he says, I am the resurrection and the life. I am the first and the last. I am the beginning and the end. So come raised up in that reality. See, come be raised up in that reality. But in, you know, in every case, there has to be a death before there can be a resurrection. There's no such thing as a resurrection out of being alive, <laughs> you know. <clears throat> and so you realize that this is, that, that a true resurrection has the element of death automatically built into it. And so when Jesus is saying, I mean, you know, he's saying, eat my flesh and drink my blood, and we go, okay, mm -hmm. but that's an exchange of life. He said, the words I speak are spirit and life. That's an exchange of life. This is, this is going to be, okay, so, so let's go back to the picture we were using in last class. You see the bride, you see transparent walls, you see when people look at her, they don't see her, they see an enthroned lamb in her. Right? <clears throat> and, and for her, that is her life. That's her life. Yeah. That lamb that's in her, that's her life. <clears throat> and what's, I love the picture of it because here it's showing New Jerusalem. It's a city. You don't see any life moving around in there besides the lamb. You know what I mean? You don't see this spooky, you know, mist that's her life somehow still in there. That's her life. Yeah. And she's content with that. She married that. You know, that's what she wanted to be one with. And the end result is his flow is her flow. Right? His, his flow is her flow. <clears throat> All right. Um, so let's look, uh, let's look at verse 66. We're getting close to the end of this now. Uh, from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. All right, so there is, um, 
they're going back, that's, this is trying to communicate to us more than they're going back to their homes. Right? They're going back from the land. They are. They're going back from the life that is offered. Yes? They're going back from the fathers into the man. There you go. Yeah, that's what they're going back. They're going back to identify right there. <clears throat> Absolutely. They're going, uh, now they said they're going back to the man and the fathers. They're going back to miracle bread. They're going back to um, gosh, the Lord has just been dealing with me so much that I'm, I just am I'm trying not to cross any lines at this point. I don't want to release anything until it's all worked in me and I keep coming up to and I'm going, okay, well I better not say and I'm even pausing and hesitating but <clears throat> um, the thing that moved them and, and this, is, this is what you have to realize the question in our lives is, what moves us? What moves us? What is it that is motivating us? What, what moves us? Okay, well, if you go to, um, <clears throat> you know, if, if you go to somebody and they say, well, you know, you say to them, what should I do, you know, with my life? What should I da 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 da? And they say, well, do what makes you happy. Well, you know, God, yeah. Well, I mean, I would drink Coke still, and I would, drink, I would, you know, I would, I would do things I shouldn't do, and you know. But do, do what makes you happy. Okay, you could say that that's good advice because that's what moves you, buddy. But see, that's the wrong thing that's supposed to be moving us. We're supposed to be moved by the Lamb. We're supposed to be moved by the life. We're supposed to be filled. We're supposed to be uh, bought. We're supposed to be all of the things that, that take it out of our hands and say, look, you're mine. You know, and this is, this is, you know, this is the path. Walk ye in it. Look neither to the right nor to the left. And, you know, <clears throat> and so... Um, so they're missing it because, as Mallory said, they're going back to the manna. They're going back to the fathers and not the father. They're, they're, uh, and here's what's funny is the only shot that these people, these 5,000 people got, the only shot they ever got that was anything close to what happened 40 years in the wilderness with the manna falling every day, was this feeding of the 5,000. And now they're going back on that, too. <laughs> Isn't that funny? Yeah. Well, it's kind of crazy because right after having that happen, Jesus calls them out and says, you're not even wanting to find me for the miracles. That's it. You're just wanting to find me because you got your stomach filled. Right. Which what we're talking about, which is a danger in, in the culture here today, is, is just... Be awesome. Do more what makes you feel good and what makes you happy. Right. And it, it's, that's exactly it. So it's not even the miracles that they were after. They just wanted themselves fed. And then two verses down, they're asking for a sign. It's like, is that manna? Uh, I mean, the, the multiplication of the loaves not enough? Right. <laughs> and so Jesus is just like, forget it. It's right. true life here. That's it. That's right. And and there. So you're in all of these things. You're seeing their motivations. You're seeing what moves them. And uh, so let's put it on this front. Um, our commitments to God are pretty much worth nothing. Because why? But because I mean, because. Many of them can be circumvented easily because we're motivated by other things than what we're committing ourselves to. Yeah. You know, we're, we, you know, I want to commit myself to you, Jesus. I want to be a missionary. I want to serve you. I want to, you know, do this and that. But as soon as something else comes along, that can your motives can jump into that wagon and go. Well, I'd really rather do this. You know, and he's going. 
well, wait a minute. <laughs> Didn't you say, and you go, no, I don't remember that. And he goes, well, you were pretty young. Keep your mouth shut from now. <laughs> I mean, there's some wisdom in that, but uh, he probably wouldn't talk that way to us. But thank God he sent me his messenger. <laughs> All right, um, so <clears throat> here from that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him, walked no more with him. Um, is it possible that some of them had walked long enough to get his teachings and they walked with his teachings? Yes. But does that mean anything in itself? No. You know, you know Jesus didn't come here to leave his teachings so that we would all keep his teachings. I know that sounds crazy because that's what a lot of people teach. He came here to give us his life, and there's nothing like nature. There's nothing like knife, uh, life. The, uh, nature will do because it's in it. It's part of the, the fiber and the DNA of it. But teachings can come and go. Ke teachings can be um, watered down or, you know, twisted to, to suit your flesh. <clears throat> that's why to, you know, that's why I'm saying, to see clearly, to see the heart of the Lord, to see the heart of the Lord for the heart of the Father, to give him that, to see that when we commit ourselves in this spirit and in this way to his heart, we end up with the heart of the Father. Because he's not going to get you anywhere else. That's, that's the way that he is. So there has to be this point where we realize our own frailties. We realize that our commitments are not going to. And besides, your commitments are not what's supposed to be putting you over. You know? <clears throat> so, so these folks, they're leaving. They're going their own way because uh, you're seeing a, a division First, there was a contrast, amen, in what's being said. You got feeding the 5,000, moving right into them, chasing Jesus, and Jesus going, you know, this, here, your, your motives are all wrong to, to let me tell you what the true Passover of verse 4 is meant to be, and starts explaining it, and it starts being put on a completely different basis that, than all of the teachings they've ever had, and so the contrast is building and building and building and building until there's a dividing. Yeah. You know, until there's a dividing. <clears throat> so the dividing takes place because there's, uh, there's those who want to be satisfied mm -hmm. and those who want to satisfy his heart. Yeah. All right. Um, we... We are selfish by nature. The only way to change isn't to say, I'm going to be unselfish and I'm going to just seek to satisfy his heart. You have to know his heart and be moved by his heart. You have to see that the Father would never bring up what is really in his heart and say, we'll put that first. He would, uh, we use the example a couple of classes back, we use the example of, <clears throat> you had the story of a, uh, of Abraham sending Eliezer, who represents the Father and the Holy Spirit, to get a bride for the son, and and the 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 son is not even he's not he's not there going hey this is my heart Father can you do this for me can you make this happen and you know and here's my prayer oh Father would you move mountains to bring this about I mean he's just like not even there. It's the heart of the Father for a son, not based on his co coercing him or coaxing him or trying to bring it about. It is in the heart of the Father because he knows the heart of the Son. And so he says to Eliezer, the, who represents the Holy Spirit, go down into a foreign land, come down into the earth, go down there and bring back Christians. Let's shoot them all up in the air. Shoot him right into his tent. No, no, no. I don't know how big that tent was, but 
<laughs> three ring circus. Anyway, so he, he says, you know, um, he says, go down there and, you know, and he has a couple of questions. Well, how am I going to, da, da, da. he says, well, this and that. And then he says, this is the Holy Spirit who, who, who understands the hearts. Says, what, what if she doesn't come? What if she doesn't come? You talk about the weakness of God. To put himself in a situation like that, God never would have to be in a situation like that where she doesn't come. But this is a different kind of God. Amen. What if she doesn't come? Holy Spirit to the Father. What if she doesn't come? Mm -hmm. Should I come back and get the Son and bring him back to the earth? And the Father goes, no way. The son was already down there. He died. If she doesn't come, that's it. We'll, we'll deal with that. But we're not sending him back into that mess. He's already laid down his life. <clears throat> so, but the point being, that conversation's going on between the Father and the Holy Spirit, and the son isn't even brought in on it because they're not, he's not supposed to. If you, if you comprehend God, if you comprehend the way that Godhead works, then you would understand that the that Jesus that the Son isn't going to speak up for himself. So we have we as we know as we know them and we know their heart. We realize the Father surely never spoke up before the foundation of the world and said, "I'd like sons in the image of Christ." I would like sons. He didn't. He didn't do it. He he didn't do it. But the Son knows the will of the Father. And so he comes down and he lays down his life because he says this is the way that it's, they're going to be. Because, you know, you got to remember there's history before this. The history goes all the way back to the creation. And, you know, as I said, did Adam and Eve sin on the seventh day? Because it says sixth day did it us, you know, all is good. And the seventh day God rested. And the next thing we hear about is Adam and Eve sinning. And he's going, I was just kind of hoping to rest a little bit, <laughs> you know. And now I'm going to be busy forever. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, there's a history there of let us make man in our image. Let us look at man. Is he in our image? No. Then Jesus says, I will give you sons in, the Im in my image that you may be conformed to the image of his son. And out from that, guess what? They won't be, they won't be, here's the thing, they won't be born again so that they're in the family. That's the way we say it. See, we're in the family, so I'm in the family. And, you know, and the, the saying that's insane, you know, well, I'm a child of the king. Jesus is the king. You're not his child. Just dumb. <laughs> you know? My child of the king. No, you're not. No, I am. We sing it. And every preacher says it. You're not. <laughs> you know? It's like we've got all this stuff formed in us. It's all formed. It's religion and, and, and snappy sayings and, you know, stuff that's, you know, supposedly spiritual when it's not. Jesus says, I will die to bring this about for the Father. So what do you think the father said? <clears throat> what, do you think, what do you think any father would say? How about that? What do you think the father said? What do you think any father would say? Any father would say, no, no. I will give up what I want, but don't you die. I want you safe. Uh, you, <laughs> you see that in the... In the movie, the Bible, when Abraham was asked to, you know, to kill his son, offer up his son, and in, in the movie, George C. Scott is Abraham, and he's, he hears it from God, and he falls down, and he goes, no, and he's raising his fist, ah, you know, I can't, don't ask me to do that, you know, accounting that God was able to raise him from the dead, yeah. and says, 
You know, he's not freaking out. And he's like the father in that he takes his only son, the son whom he loves, and he takes him up there and says, this is where it's really at. The altar is where it's at. This is where we'll find out sons. This is it. And the heavenly father, when Jesus said, I'll do it, I'll go down and die and I'll bring it to pass. He didn't say no. He said, the father said, this is the way we live. This is so beautiful to us. It is not a self protect any, let me tell you, within that Godhead in any direction, anytime one of them stands up for their own rights, you turn the light out on God. It goes out. It's no longer God. So, so they are totally selfless. They are totally ready to go to whatever links for someone else because they don't have their own interests in mind. The son would say, the Holy Spirit, the Father will cover me or take care of me. You know, even the scripture where it says Jesus accounting that the Father would raise him from the dead. Well, he's going, well, that's his business. No, no, it, that's the true spirit of it. It must be his business. You cannot make it your business or it's not pure. And in the Godhead, again, once you made it your business, you shut out the light. You turned it off in God. Now he's not God anymore. He's like us. So, anyway. All right, so I jotted down a few notes as I was meditating on this. Um, um, after gathering a great following of 5,000, Jesus was not afraid to divide. Hallelujah. Yeah, amen. Thank you, brother. He was not afraid. We were afraid to divide. Well, no, the goal is that we all be together and we're happy. And we're all knit together like little doves in a you know, nest. No, no, no. One's a little dove, you know, getting up close next to a little, little, little wolf that's licking its lips, you know, and going, <laughs> yeah, get a little closer, little dove. <laughs> you know? But we think, but our view is, man, we got, you know, this is it. This is, you know, I mean, God doesn't want any division. No, no, God knows that Christ is not divided. We're divided. If it's not Christ in us, we're divided. You say, but I never have an argument with anybody. You're already divided if it's not Christ. You know, I don't argue with other people. See, it's you and other people. Whether you argue or not, you're divided by saying that. <laughs> but but that, Jesus is in that situation and you see it all the time this is just one example of this I mean Jesus was never all really concerned about you know um, you know I wouldn't want any divisions here I wouldn't want you know even he says it I don't think that I've come to bring peace make everyone happy and comfortable I've come to divide but see He's come to do that in you and me too, to divide spirit from soul and soul from body and to form his son in us. He's come to do that. The cross is a, you know, the cross isn't, you know, it's so funny. The cross generally was something that divides, you know. You got, you got the women there with John, oh, God, you know, you got the Pharisees going, oh, yeah, the son of God, you got the Roman going, you know, up and up. You got, you know, you got all this stuff. None of it's cohesive. It's not. It's all everybody's deal. Well, where are the Romans? Long live the Romans. You know? Well, the Romans are still alive in us. When somebody does something we don't like or whatever, long live the Romans. Oh, I mean, glory to God. You know? So, so Jesus, he feeds the 5,000. 
I mean, you got to see this in context. He feeds the 5,000, and he brings in all of these people, and they're all amiable, and they're all open, and they're all wanting to be close to Jesus, and they're all feel good, and their bellies are full. You can't get better than that. Good feelings, full bellies, miracles, time to take a nap. But they didn't. So you got all of this, this stuff going on. And so, so then Jesus, remember several classes back, we talked about this, but at a certain juncture, Jesus said, you know, Jesus left. He left for one main reason. All of a sudden, they want to make him king, and they want to make him a prophet. They want to call him a prophet. You're a prophet, and you're a king. And he's, he's thinking one thing. I'm bread. I'm the only thing that's going to bring you to what the Father desires. I'm broken bread. I'm dead bread. And you must take this death, not the life, not the, but the, the death is the life. Yeah. The slaughtered lamb is the life of the bride. Yeah. So you have to take this in you. So they're going, well, we... You know, I mean, they're, they're looking for him, going, we were looking for him. And he goes, you're, you're looking for bread, but not this bread. So he tries to explain it to them, and then they start getting ruffled. So the disciples are watching this, and they're seeing a little tension here. And they're going, man, this thing could go south quickly. You know, we need to talk to Jesus. You know, we need to, we need to be advisors to the king. He's not king. He's bread. He's broken bread. We need to go to him, and we need to talk him through this. Look, everything, everything that you just built up, you're about to tear down. And Jesus says, I don't, I don't have a problem with tearing down what I built if it's not what I meant when it, you know, what I had in mind after it was built. I don't have a problem tearing that down. We go, Jesus. You're, you're supposed to be on the side of peace, you know. And he's going, no. No, in fact, uh, you know, and they go, okay, well, just this. Don't talk anymore. I mean, this thing about bread, and he goes, well, I'm fixing to go talk about, you know, eating my flesh and drinking my blood. And they go, what? <laughs> Do not go there. I'm telling you, this can't end well. You're going to lose let me, can I explain something to you? You can't lose what you never had. I know you, I know at best you remember the saying, but if you don't get it in you, someday down the road, some friend or some group or some this or that is going to walk out on you or turn on you or whatever, and you're going to spend, like, like Samuel mourning over Saul. You're going to, oh, God, accept him. Go, I'm not going to accept him. I'm not. And you see it in the spirit in which he carried himself. He went around and he looked for every mighty warrior and every noble person and everybody that was a big shot, and he gathered him to Saul because that was in his heart. And you see David... Every outcast and every reject comes down and finds a place with David. You know? So God says, this is not my son. And he may be king, but he's not ruling in the spirit that I want a kingdom to rule. So I, Saul, I reject you as king. Well, did Saul go to hell? I don't know. Seemed like he was carrying around some demons with him already, but anyway, that's another story. <laughs> but, you know, so, would there's the, so one day there will be this weeping and this crying over what you lost, and it was, you're weeping over something that you never had, you, that was never really yours. You, well, I thought that we were, okay, well, there's your problem right there. You thought, first of all, you shouldn't be thinking. 
You know, let this mind be in you to give it up if necessary. Even what is yours? Thy son, thy only son. See? We, we, we're, we're confused about the heart of the Father. We're confused about the heart of Jesus. We're confused about the heart of the way the Holy Spirit is towards them. And to glorify Jesus and to not speak of himself. And we're confused about all that because the way of Christianity is that we must lift a banner high enough that everybody will come to it. Jesus, you know, so somebody says, hey, I got an idea. Let's just have, let's just give away food. Let's have a big food giveaway. And then, you know, so you have it on tables out there and then 5,000 people come. You know, and you never inquire in their motives. You never, you know, just feed them and then, you know, Give them a fish, and they go back to their lives. Or, in Jesus' case, you could almost not blame him for freaking out over it. Eat my flesh and drink my blood, and Jesus is saying, and he talks about the Father all through this, and he says, the words I'm speaking to you are spirit and life. And I'm also telling you this, not just the positive, but here's the negative. Your motives for seeking me are wrong. If the Lord said that to us, would we go, oh, my God, oh, my God. Oh, I don't want that in my life. I want you. I want only your heart. Or is it, uh, he's probably wrong. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's probably wrong, you know. Um, you know, Jesus is hits it most of the time, but this one yeah. time, he, I think he got off, you know. <clears throat> well, Jesus doesn't shut up. Jesus doesn't shut it down. He, he, he turns the flame of the altar higher, turns it seven times hotter than it was before. And he gets it so hot that, you know, the, the rats and roaches start coming out of the woodwork, fleeing. Are y'all okay with this? <laughs> and, no rats and roaches. Okay. Well, <laughs> they, they start coming out because they're going to seek to save themselves. But the lamb stays on the altar. So he doesn't mind throwing a fire up higher and higher to see what he's got. All right. Now, one thing you have to remember, everything that I'm saying, I agree with, and I, I tell you, as much as in me is, I try to live by this, okay? I'm not per perfect or have any of this down like that, but I genuinely, I mean it. I try to live this way. But the Lord began to reveal this, a bunch of this stuff to me back when I was in Bible school, and at that time, I wasn't at the place I'm at right now. Do you understand what I'm saying? And maybe neither are you. My hope isn't that we'll all get up and go out of here and everybody will follow Jesus, you know what I mean? Well, praise God, Jesus said it all, but we said, well, uh, where shall I go? You have the words of eternal life. We all stuck through this. You're, you're not there yet. The hope is that the seeds of this reality can get in you and start getting in your heart and start going, roots go down. And it takes a while, but the roots start going down. And before too long, your heart, see, we always say, well, my heart belongs to Jesus. Does it? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, my heart does, you know. I mean, the Lord was even dealing with me recently, and I can't even remember what that specific thing, I remember that, what he was trying to say to me. And it was something that, I was taking, uh, I wasn't intentionally taking it lightly. It was only lightly because I didn't understand the depth of the Father's heart on the matter. Yeah. And when all of a sudden the Holy Spirit let me see it, and it was just like opening up the veil and shutting it real quick, I just went, oh, my God, my God, my God, what is wrong with me? Because 
It was no big deal to me. It was no violation to me. Everything was fine. I'm doing good. The Lord's good. Da, 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 da. But to see that and to see his heart and that I was just, you know, it was almost like, well, you know, it's a garden with his heart in it. I'm just trampling through it. Oh, well, what a pretty garden. I'm just glad to, I'm just glad to see your heart and, you know, missing this and that and whatever. And, uh, the, the effect of it, it just humbles you if you want his heart. But see, you may not be in that place yet. But you ha if you believe there's something to that, you know, and, you know, Peter and them, those guys were still messed up, weren't they? Yeah. But at least Peter had been around enough. He says, Jesus said, are you going to go away also? And he goes, you have the words of eternal life. We're with you, buddy. You know, and so you have, if those seeds get in there, you go, you know, Lord, I'm the biggest idiot in the bunch here. But I ain't so stupid. I don't know that you're not the one I need to stick with. Amen. You know, Amen. you know, I, this is what I so. Sometimes you scare me, Lord, when with some of the stuff you say, you know, the way you put it and stuff, you know, roaches and rats out of the fire and stuff like that um, but when I look in your face yeah. I believe that this is what I should do this is where I should be my heart belongs to you and you know and you you know you got to love the song of Solomon I am my beloved's and he is mine I mean imagine to give your heart to the Lord on that level and then he can give back that he feels the freedom to give back and to open his heart and say, I'm going to show you things I have not seen nor ear hath heard. We go, oh, the Holy Spirit will reveal deep things to me. <laughs> Neither hath entered into the heart of man, not the head of man, or the doctrines and theology of man. Never got into your heart in this way of things, hidden things, the hidden, the deep things of God, of God. So he's, he's offering, he's offering, but he's not just going to open just because we pray that or say that or think that we really want it. And, so, you know, I'm going to close with this, but <clears throat> I've been praying a lot of prayers recently, different kind of prayers. And uh, I, could, I could or never would share them because they are from my heart to him and and uh, and then when he speaks back or doesn't speak but I reveals his heart and that speaks more than words um, and they are they are they are the br biggest break r with religion Ever. And I'm pretty much a non-religious person. <laughs> you know, I just love Jesus. And uh, they have been, to as much as I can know being a person that doesn't know much, they have been more tender and sensitive to what's in his heart and to pray his heart and to say stuff like and I prayed this one before so I can say this one to you and to say stuff like and if I never never ever get there the way that you need or want I pray for I pray for y'all I pray for y'all I pray that or people that I don't know, and that, Lord, that you may get that from somebody. If I can never do that, and that I'm sorry, and I am da da da, da but I, I will pray for them, not, don't even need to know their name. I want, I want you to get it, and it doesn't have to be out of me. <clears throat> you 
those kind of prayers and that kind of seeking is completely different than all of our other kinds of seeking. It, it demands that it not be about us. It demands that there not be some reward at the end that will reward us. Not a reward. Notice my word. I'm very specific on this. That it not be a reward. Father, we just thank you for your <clears throat> spirit who is faithful to uh, speak even apart from anything I say. Thank you for those who have shared tonight and shared life and reality from their hearts and, and their hunger and love for you has flowed out to all of us. Father, we are... We are being dealt with by the Holy Spirit and being placed in a class that is meant to take us out of a class. It's a class outside of class. It's a class that is set to find your heart, Father, by the Son and by finding his heart for you. And as we find his heart for you, we will have the right heart. And so we seek, according to the order, we seek him that we may know you. We seek him to know you. We find him filled with you, Father. And so we're, we're open we're open as much as we can be open as much as we can be if that be very closed we are open as much as we can and ask you to open open more open more of our heart and of our hunger and of our desire to be open and holy spirit we ask you to move in such a manner that we will not be fearful but believing. Jesus, one of the main things you said after the resurrection was fear not. You said it over and over again. Fear not, but believe. Fear not. It is I. You were, you were saying that before and after. It was so common. It was so much in your heart to try to reach us knowing that we misinterpret, misread, and misformulate things that cause us fear in us. And you do care about us. And you would hate that our fake fears would separate us from you. And so your first words, your first words was to, to comfort and to reach our heart. Fear not. It is I. Hmm. And even in those words, you're telling us, if it's you, we don't have anything to fear. Hmm. So thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Continue to bless us in Jesus' name. Amen.